everybody, and welcome to Greenville High School Gymnasium, where tonight the Lady Wave of Greenville play host the Lady Pirates of West Carrollton High School. I'm Alex Warner. Jody Flummersfeld will be joining me in a little bit. Coach's Corner tonight, we have assistant Wave varsity coach, Lindsay McGlinch. And uh, Lindsay, let's talk a little bit. How long have you been helping uh, Coach Kearns here with the varsity program? I've been helping out for the last four years here since I started working here at Greenville High School. Now, when you say working here at Greenville High School, so you used to be a uh, nurse, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So what are your duties out here at the high school right now? So currently I'm the school nurse here at Greenville High School. Uh, so I run all the operations here, and then I help uh, over at the junior high if there's anything that's needed there. Okay. And you've been doing that for how long then? Uh, four years now. This four, mm -hmm. okay. Let's talk a little bit about this Lady Wave Ball Club and everything. Young ball club, we're not real tall, but we scrap hard. We play pretty well defensively for the most part, and yet we just aren't quite getting over the hump yet. I think it's coming. We just got to make sure we're putting everything together. We're definitely a little feisty team, definitely young, um, so building, and so I think it'll come. It's just going to take some time. Now, how's your typical day go? Because you girls practice right after school? Correct, yes. So usually the girls go to school all day, and then uh, we come practice right after school, let's out. Now, how's that work with the boys' team? Do you alternate, like, somebody has it right after school, and then somebody comes in, say, like, at 5, or how's that work? Uh, usually we're always early since uh, all of our coaches do work at the school. Um, so we usually get the first practice, and then sometimes the boys do have first practice if, uh, if need be. But usually we're always first. What's your practice schedule been like over the holidays here? Uh, we've been practicing every day, um, pretty much, except for the last two days last week when we had the holiday. Um, and this week we're practicing every day this week. So pretty normal schedule. Yep. Now, I know we've got some freshmen that play on JV team. Do we have a freshman schedule at all? We have some uh, that do play freshman schedule. Um, and we've got a couple games scheduled. And I think one's coming up next Thursday, I think, with Tri-County North. Now, this is a tall order we've got tonight, and I don't mean tall in a sense physically. They're just a good ball club that Wes Carrollton brings in here. They're, I was looking at the Rossi, everybody over 5'7", five, 5'8", five, but uh, they're quick. They're definitely quick, and um, it's going to be a, a good game tonight, I think, hopefully. We put a lot of pressure on Skylar Roberts, not only to do the bulk of her scoring, but also to handle the ball. She's going to have her hands full tonight. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to have to have somebody else step up and help handle the ball with her, but, yeah, I think we're. it should be a good one. Everybody healthy tonight? Pretty much, yep. Everybody's back. Um, so we should be good. We're full roster, so we should be good. <laughs> well, let's hope we have a good ball game here tonight to wrap up this part of the season. Uh, our next ball game, we have about a week off, do we? Yep, week off with the New Year's here, and we'll be back in action next Wednesday, then after tonight. Well, let's go get them tonight. This has been varsity assistant coach Lindsey McGlinch on Coach's Corner. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck, and let's get one. Jody and I'll be back with the pregame show here in just a minute. You watch high school basketball here on the Wave at GHS on YouTube. Welcome back to Greenville High School Gym, where the Lady Wave gets set to take on the Lady Pirates of West Carrollton. Alex Warner joined here by Jody Flumbersfeld. And Jody, this is a ball club that comes in West Carrollton, eight and one, had their first loss the other night against a really good Sydney ball club, 55-54. Yeah, Sydney's had a nice team for several years now, so to give them that kind of game. Uh, we expect to see a lot out of them tonight. I think it's interesting. This is a uh, ball club. They're putting up 67 points a ball game, and yet they really don't have a lot of height. It seems like they're all about anything from 5'5 five, five to 5'8, five, 5'9. Five, yeah, I think we're going to see a fast game, very quick, and up and down the floor a lot. Maybe a lot of pressure on the ball. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure put on the shoulders of Skyler uh, Fletcher tonight. Skyler's not only our leading scorer, but she's the one that basically handles the ball. So. I think she's in for a night. She better be ready to play. Right, and uh, hopefully they don't catch on too much that she likes to go left. So uh, and get she does, have, she does like that block on the left side. Yes. So uh, we can get the ball moving around a little bit, just hit some shots and stay in the game for a while. I think that'll be beneficial to our girls. You know, we're finally starting to get maybe a little more consistent scoring-wise. We put 62 on the board at Xenia that night. Unfortunately, lost 63-62, but just to get some points up on the board because we've struggled offensively for the most part. And they're they're been close here in the last few games and that's that's tough on a young team. So hopefully they can get over that hump a little bit and uh, get in that scoring column. It'll be interesting, this is the first time the Waves have played, uh, I think in about eight days or so forth. So you know, over the holidays, some teams really respond well and other teams not so much. Yeah, some like to get that rest. 
and some like that routine of being in school and going home and coming back to their game and it just works out better but we'll see how they respond tonight kind of like a saturday afternoon game in a way and there are plenty of saturday afternoon games still coming up as the girls in the miami valley league play on a wednesday night and then saturday at noon and that's a little different isn't it did, when you were playing did you play any saturday yeah, afternoon games we, we always played in the evening um sometimes too much it seemed like so, you know but uh yeah it's hard sometimes to get Again, it's out of the routine, and it's hard to get going sometimes. Well, anyhow, we're glad you folks have joined us out there. We have uh, Shane Bragg up there, our cameraman producer tonight, as we get prepared to take on the uh, Lady Pirates from West Carrollton High School. Glad you could join us. We'll be back take a look at the starting lineups in just a little bit. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First of all, for the visiting Lady Pirates of West Carrollton, under the direction of head coach Lonzi Addison, they come in with a record of 8-1, 5-1 and one, five and one in Miami Valley League play, averaging 67 points a contest offensively, giving up only 40. Number one's the leading scorer in the Miami Valley League thus far. That's Selena Frost, averaging 18 a game. She's a 5'6 sophomore. Number 11 is 5'5 junior Ashley Williams, averaging 8 a game. Ashia Maddox is a 5'7 junior. She wears number 12, averaging 13 a game to go along with 11 rebounds. Number 23 is Taryn Dewberry, a 5'7 senior, averaging 11 a game. And rounding out tonight's starting lineup, number 33, Maddie Lindsay, a 5'8 sophomore. So again, it's Frost 1, Williams 11, Maddox 12, Dewberry 23, and Lindsay 33. For head coach Rachel Kearns, Lady Wave come in 2 and 7 overall, 2 and 5 in the MVL. They average 38 a game, give up 45. Number five is a 5'8 junior, Gracie Thacker, averaging four points and five rebounds a contest. Emily Bowling is a 5'8 senior. She wears number 10. Skylar Fletcher is a 5'5 junior, wears number 12. Skylar, the Waves' leading scorer, averaging 13 a contest. Manaxi Pandy averages 10 a game. She's a 5'4 junior, wearing number 13. And Josie Camacho, a 5'2 junior, wears number 20 to round out the starting five for the way. So again, it's Thacker five, Bowling 10, Fletcher 12, Pandy 13, Camacho 20. And it's gonna be interesting to see how we handle what I think is gonna be full court press by uh, West Carroll. Yes, a lot of pressure and a lot of fast movement up and down the court. Wave will be in the home white, trimmed in hunter green. West Carroll comes in wearing uh, black, trimmed in red. And uh, red numbers that uh, might be a little hard to pick up for old eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Tide, I always talk about probably the worst one we had was Sydney one year came in white uniforms with gold numbers and they weren't outlined. And they weren't oh, outlined. Lord. <laughs> if they're not blocked out, that that's makes right. It tough. Makes it real tough. Well, this is Thacker steps in against Lindsay. Wave going to your left and the ball controlled by the Lady Pirates. Yep, right away a foul on Skyler Fletcher. Boy, yep. we don't want that to happen. Yep. So Skyler picks up one real quick foul. First six seconds of the ball game, and Pirates inbounds. Just didn't move her feet. Yep, this is Frost, nice move of the bucket. Doesn't get it to go, and kicks it back out. This is Lindsay this time. Another rebound, pulled down this time, Emily Bowling. Right. First possession, Lady Wave. And a travel violation. Handed out, or handed out there a little bit by number uh, 23, Dewberry. And, yep. Didn't want that early. No, and I'll have to admit, I kind of missed what she did. I didn't, didn't see it. She must, have, must yeah. have drug her foot somewhere yeah. there. Looks like I've got three veteran officials out there tonight. So I did not get their names, so I apologize for that. Trying to set a pick up high. This is Williams, loses control out in the corner. And, Turn over the other way. I'd like to see the wave get a shot off this trip down the floor. You know, sometimes, Jody, when you've had a you know a Christmas break and, like you said, you get out of that routine and all of a sudden you've been playing at practice speed instead of game speed, it takes a quarter or two to get, yes, get your legs does. under you. This is Thacker inside. He's playing straight man-to-man, -man, aren't they? Yes. Bowling tries to go baseline, nothing there, and kicks back out to Thacker. I think they've scouted uh, 
Get out of the way. They're going to be all over Skyler Fletcher. Yes. But actually to the Oh, glass. that was a nice move. She just didn't turn her shoulders yeah. and square up. Right. That was going to be called on Emily Bowling, and that'll be the wave second, her first. And so two quick fouls on the Lady Wave here, and we played just a little over a minute. That was a real nice move by Minoxi Pandy, yep. but nice move, just right. needed to square those shoulders a bit or put a little more English on the ball. Yeah, they did the English there. You're right. Oh, Gracie got beat baseline. They threw it away. Tell you what, they're helping us out. They are. That's back-to-back -back balls thrown out of that same corner. It's like there's a magnet yeah. over in that corner. Those balls just suck right into it. Kind of like a black hole over there right now. Boy, is Fletcher really hounded and breaks free. Take it right on in, Skyler. Yep, draws the foul. There that was going to go on Lindsay. So Maddie Lindsay, the 5'8 junior, picks up her first. And going to the line to shoot a pair is going to be Skyler Fletcher. Played a minute and a half, and we are scoreless. Ooh. <laughs> a little strong. A little strong. Hit the, hit the flange back, kind of sat there for a minute, and then kicked right back out, didn't it? A little rushed on that. Yeah. I gave Skyler last time I talked to her after a game, I don't know, a week or two ago. She's got those sparkly white shoes on. I keep waiting for like little lights to flash every time she <laughs> makes a move. Well, she misses both foul shots. Uh, was, it must have been the shoes. Must have been. Must have been the shoes. What's her shooting percentage normally? Well, we'll have there? to look that up. The Wave as a team only shoot 50. 50 and I shouldn't say 57, only 50%, 7%. You'd like to think it'd be in the 60s at yes. least, right? Yes. That foul is going to go on Josie Camacho. Well, that's three wave team fouls already. Well, you don't want to get in nice foul defense. trouble early. Yep, kick the ball. What was it, the boys game last night against Stebbins? First half was played with a total, I think, of maybe five or six fouls. And then both teams are shooting double bonus halfway through the fourth quarter in the wow. second half. Nice shot up and in that time. First two points of the night. And that's made by number 23, Dewberry. Yep. yep. That's that pressure. Williams gets it back and brings it back out. Takes a short jumper, no good. And pulled out of there by Thacker. I'll tell you what, they are going to pressure us all night in that backcourt, aren't they? Yep. Held ball and possession arrow favors the Lady Wave. Scott gets up, kind of a little... Uh, look on her face. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, she's kind of looking to give up the ball a little bit too soon maybe, yeah. and um, definitely her teammate Camacho was not looking for that pass. Yeah. Get in there, Skyler. Nope. Thacker with her second rebound. Nice. Up and in. You know, Gracie Thacker has improved quite a bit. She had a 14-point game earlier this year. We need to have that extra third person that can score besides Pandy and Fletcher. Yes. So hopefully you'll be Gracie Thacker. Avery Bowman's going to check in here along with Megan Lynn. So two freshmen come into the game. Avery Bowman's been doing a great job defensively and so forth. And then Megan Lynn comes in and uh, Megan's averaging six rebounds a contest. Had to sit out a game or two with uh, some, was it COVID issues? I think it was. A little protocol. Or, yeah, yeah, COVID protocol. This is Williams from outside, boy. That was money. She averages eight a game. Maybe shuffled her feet a little bit. Yeah. She definitely uh, took advantage of getting the feet set after she caught the ball. 5-2. <laughs> we've played three minutes here. Pandy penetrates, kicks over to Thacker. We're going to work the ball around 30 feet from the bucket here. Get into our pattern. Going to be a foul called. Second of the game on the Lady Pirates. Going to be on Ashley Williams, her first. Avery Bauman to inbounds, tries up over high to Thacker, has it stolen, comes right back into the hands of Megan Lynn. There we oh, go. Lynn's in the ball game for three seconds, has her first bucket. 5-4, wave trail by one. Nice quick move to the bucket, misses the shot, and kicks back out to Lindy. It's a shot put up in there by Dewberry, no good. good. man by Pandy. 
That's one of the few. Oh, steal in there by Frost. Up and missed it. Pandy fights for it. It's Fletcher finally and pick it up. Boy, a lot of quick hands out there right yes, now. Yes, yes. I think that ball was touched by about seven different players there. They definitely attacked back. Mm -hmm. If you don't move to the pass, you're in yep. trouble. Foul going to be called on Frost. You stand and wait on it, and it's going to the other end. Yeah, yeah, you better be getting after it. Well, we're halfway through the first quarter here. Five, four, your score. Pirates by one. Checking in the ball game is China Marzette, a 5'8 junior for the Pirates. Bauman inbounds. Gets it over here to Lind. Swing it back. I'd like to have seen him set a screen and Ooh. swing it back. Take the shot from the corner yes. right there. Skyler Fletcher, little reverse move, goes to the right side and draws a foul. Now she settle down now and just mm -hmm. shoot these free throws nice and smooth. Fouls on number 20, that'll be Marzette's first. 14 fouls and well, Fletcher missed her first two. Let's see if Skyler can convert here and give the wave at least a tie if not the lead. Come on, Skyler, 0 for 3. Hold that follow through. Mm -hmm. There we go. And a timeout called by West Coast. So timeout in the court, 3.52 to go here in a tie ball game, 5-5. Jody and I'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. Time back in. The ball belongs to the Lady Pirates at the stage in, coming down north here. And Tie ball game. It's an eight and one ball club. They lost to Sydney the other night by one. This is Williams outside. Man, she's hit two, two. threes. Yep. Didn't shuffle her feet that time. No, didn't she need did not. To. No, she did not. Eight five. That was a 22 footer there. She's a couple feet behind the arc. Checking back into the game, Camacho comes in along with Bowling and uh, coming out are Pandey and Thacker as Rachel Feely tries to give each starter just a little bit of a break here. Because yes. it's going to be a fairly fast-paced ball game, I think. Score doesn't reflect it right now, but... Well, they're sitting on uh, Skyler's right side so she can make some yep. right-handed layups. Yep. Yeah, they're trying to force her right all yep. the time. Which, if I was the opposing team, that's what I'd yes, do too. Yes, exactly. This 23, she's, boy, she's, Dewberry's made some nice quick passes. Mm -hmm. I don't think her teammates have been ready for a couple no. of them, have they? And it wasn't her fault the passes were there. This Dewberry going to try to hit it on her own. Nope. Get the ball. Oh, no. Cross had it and then kicks it back over. Going to call a foul here. Be bowling second. second. Fourth team foul. Both teams with four fouls here. We still have 250 to go in the first quarter. And it's not been extremely physical. No. Um, so Thacker comes back in after getting a breather and shot by Frost in the quarter. No rebound backside to Fletcher. I think that's a play I just yep. thought tried we to force have. that. Yes. Not a real good angle to throw that pass at. Gonna call that, don't call it on Thacker over the back. That'll be Emily, that was or Gracie's first, I should that say. That was unfortunate because she was going for the ball and she kind of came back into her and it made it look worse than what it yeah. actually was. Uh-oh, nice pass. It's going to go off of Megan Lind and it'll belong to the Pirates. 8 5, yeah, both teams. Yes. <laughs> well, the parents down here behind us, let's <laughs> start making layups. Well, we, we can say that for both teams right now, couldn't right. we? Right. <laughs> yeah, because Skyler's had a couple nice right handed layups that haven't gone, and uh, Minoxi missed a right handed layup. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Nice chase out of. Oh, nice move baseline. Well, I'll tell you what. It looks like neither team's played for a week. Yeah. <laughs> like I said earlier, sometimes when you haven't played for a week and you've been at practice speed and not game speed, it takes a quarter or so to get things under control and 
get back in rhythm. And right now, neither team really looks that short. Right, right. This is Josie Camacho out there. Finally kicks it back out, and here's Fletcher. Good job of showing ball by Avery Bowman. Going to go to the line, shoot a pair. Excellent. Plus, you split the uprights over the bank <laughs> yeah. so Let's go we'll take that three and tie the game. <laughs> yeah. Abigail Williams, her second. So the girl that has two threes in the scorebook already beside her name has two fouls there. With 144 left, Avery Bowman at the line. See if the freshman can convert at least one. Wave right now are one for five from the charity stripe. Well, you, Williams comes out with the two fouls. And right. In the back in the lineup is uh, Maddie Lindsay, who started the ball game, the five-eight sophomore. Let's see if Avery can convert here. Nope. Oh. One for six tonight. We hit half of those. We're uh, tied here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me, I'm no fashionista, but what's the idea behind, like, pulling up one leg of the shorts? I just think it's habit. Is it? I, don't, I mean, you I don't see several girls on yeah. both teams that do that. It kind of it almost looks like they're working. I, well, whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, 141 to go here. Let's take a look. Uh, Wave uh, JV team got beaten tonight, 35-21 uh, by a West Carrollton Ball Club. It's pretty quick, to be real honest, out yes. there. Cadence Davidson had two points. Ella McClure had a bucket for two points. Five points for Elise Fugit. And uh, tied for scoring honors for the Wave, Kyler Arnett and Maddie Hutchins with six points apiece. So 35-21 loss for the JV team of Greenville's Lady Wave program. Ball's going to be out of bounds to the Lady Wave. 141 left, 8-5 West Carrollton. Alex Warner along with Jody Flummerfeld. Glad you could join us here on YouTube at GHS. We've got four, four ball games on the chip right now that need to be edited and put out on YouTube because of school out. We don't have any way of getting those edited out. So there's going to be a whole slew of ball games coming your way in a hurry if you want to get on YouTube and watch them. Inside the Thacker, take it up, Gracie. Right idea, just didn't yes. quite get it there. Clock hasn't started, has it? No. It's stuck at 138 for a long time. And they just started it. Yeah, yeah, they got about seven, eight seconds there that uh, didn't come off the clock. <laughs> Well, Minoxi Pandy comes back in. Avery Bauman takes the seat. Let's see if uh, the clock starts this time. There we go. We won't say that Ron Who's Apple was at the controls this time. <laughs> <laughs> Just have thoughts of sugar plums dancing in his head. <laughs> or um, New Year's something Eve. for New Year's Eve, yes. <laughs> nice, uh, nice cut. Yep. Oh. Yeah, right ideas. I tell you, Megan Lynn about had another one handed to her yeah. right there after a couple tips. Greenville needs to hold them right here defensively, not let this first quarter get away from them. Right. Yeah, we don't want to get behind too much. 8-5 right now, so we're right in the thick of things. Showed ball, takes it in. Nice bank shot. Who was that? 21, Millerton? Yeah. Yes. 10-5, down to 50 seconds to go here in the opening quarter. I don't think Manaxi's taking just that one uh, layup attempt, hadn't she? Yes. Really, their man-to-man -man has done a nice job of covering any three and, mm. and recovering back for any drive. Right, right. Yeah, they play pretty good team defense. Lob pass into Lynn. Take it up there, Megan. Long shot, Camacho, a little short. Got to follow it. Yes. Felt down under half a minute to go here as West Carrollton tries to expand this five-point lead. Boy, long shot by Frost. Well, going. Lynn had it. 
Couldn't hang on to it. It comes out into the hands of oh, Tyler Parker and boy, that was, Fletcher. That was a bad foul. That's two on Skyler. 13 seconds. Yeah. And going away from the basket. Yes. Well, Skyler sits down here with two fouls. Avery Bowman checks back in. Ball under the basket here. West Carrollton's Lady Pirates, eight and one, five and one in the league. He had only losses, that one point loss to uh, Sydney, and nice steal that time by Nobody Josie went. Ballman. Yeah. Josie Camacho, oh, that's too bad. Didn't need to give the ball up that earlier. And a basket right at the end. Nobody wanted to take the ball down yep. the floor. Number 12 was Ashia Maddox. And so at the end of one here, it's West Carrollton 12 and Greenville 5. Jody and I'll be back in just a minute. Getting ready to start the second quarter here. 12 to 5 on the strength of two late baskets in that quarter, yes. Jody. We kind of, really, we gave them two quick baskets there, it seems like. Yeah, nobody wanted to handle the ball coming mm. up the floor. Right. And it's going to be Pirates ball out of bounds. So chance to increase that seven-point lead. Frost to the bucket. Off glass, no good. And, yeah. Quickness on West Carroll and tipped that out. And Lindsay picked it back up. Megan Lynn battling hard inside there. Now has to come out on the court. Puts a nice step back three, but doesn't draw iron. Saved back inbounds to Ballman. Well, the freshman brings it across the timeline here. Need a bucket. We've gone, uh, we've gone quite a while here without any. Oh boy, a nice steal in there by Dewberry. Up and in. Too long a pass across there, not enough on it. Dewberry steps in front, and all of a sudden it's 14-5, and their pressure's giving us some problems, isn't it? Yes. We knew that coming in, too. too. Too long a pass, and not stepping back to the ball just as a killer. Yeah. They were making too many 15, 20-foot passes, aren't we? Yes. Without. Without much zip on them. The panties in trouble there, hounded. And finally kicks over here to Thacker. That might be the farthest Gracie Thacker's had the ball in her hands in the whole right. season. <laughs> so with Skylar Fletcher out of there, we're going to have to get her back in. She's off the bench now. We just don't have really that one threat to put points on the board. Nice goes, give and go. Yep. Flicked out of there off the hands of Wes Carrollton, and now Skylar Fletcher comes in, and Josie Camacho comes out. 6.27 left, wave trailing by nine. We were within 5-4, five, 5-5 five, five tie. Yes. Now a 9-0 run here by West Carrollton. <laughs> Dewberry flicks it, went to go get it, and the ball hit the coach standing out of bounds. Yes. <laughs> so it's a dead ball and wave ball. <laughs> when you were coaching, were you allowed to stand up? Because I know when I was coaching, you had to sit on the bench. We had, a, I had combination. When I was down yeah. at trail, we had a couple of those years we had to sit the entire time. Yeah, and that then, was terrible. And then it? they got the the zone. Yeah, the coaching box. The coaching box. Yeah. That was a nice shot that time by Skyler Fletcher. Her first bucket of the night makes it 14-7. Yeah, I know that you were basically tied to the bench. Oh, yes. Yeah, back in the 70s and early 80s. 80s. They yeah. used to... The, the men that wore jackets would put their coat jacket up on the bench so, yeah. <laughs> or up on the seat so it looked like they were still sitting. <laughs> well, wave trail by seven. We've played two minutes here in the second quarter. Nice pass. Yeah, get in, Skyler. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Didn't have much of an angle for that. Boy, nice look down court. Well, they're out and running right now, and it's 16-7. You know, another thing, we, we've got to go meet the pass, Yes, too. that's what I've been saying. Yeah, exactly. We're sitting back and letting the ball come to us, and we've got to go get it. When you've got a quick team like this West Carrollton Ball Club, you have to go meet the ball, meet the pass. Gonna force that up. Not really the world's greatest shot there, and there's a turnover, double dribble. 
In the ball game, Tyler Parker, a 5'7 freshman, and coming out is going to be the sophomore Frost. Done a pretty good job on her. She's scoreless right now. Yeah, isn't she? and scored, and she's leading the league at 18 a game. Well, Skylar Fletcher with two quick fouls here. Wants to go left, but boy, look at him forcing her to the right side. Nice backdoor cut. Oh, off the foot of Maxi Pandy. Just put it up and not yeah. put it on the floor first. I think she probably thought she was just a little bit out of control when she caught it, mm -hmm. and she didn't have a good angle yeah. to put it up. So yeah. That's too bad. It was a nice cut and good read by Fletcher to get her the ball. 16-7, wave trail by nine, 445 left first half. This Dewberry's got some quick moves. Yes, she does. Good ball player. Step back three. Boy, pretty. Well, she's got nine points, came in averaging 11. She's been pretty impressive so far. Yes, she has. Both ends of the court. Catch it, Megan, get up and in, babe. Nope, not that time. Pulled down by the Pirates. We're going to need a timeout here pretty quick, I think. Yes. Shot by Lindsay's no good. Scrapping for it. Jump ball and belong to the wave. And we need to settle things down here. Yeah, Skyler's got to be careful on that, too. Yeah. She can't pick up a cheap, cheap third on a reach in. Now this Dewberry is quick. She's all over the court defensively too, isn't she? Yes. Avery did a nice job of breaking the pressure and this is Pandy with it. Avery long three, how about a bank? Nope. Uh-oh. This is Parker Turn. right down the middle and the one thing we didn't do was stop the ball. Unfortunately, she missed the shot. That's one of those things. Yeah. You, who's, yeah. gonna, who's gonna score? The person with the ball usually, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, we we got turned toward toward our man and didn't stop went, the ball. <laughs> didn't uh, stop the ball. 19-7 here in the second quarter with 3:49 to go. Pirates by 12. They've gone on a little 14-2 tear right here and kind of blown this open here. So who's going to be our scoring threat? But we got to get it to Pandy or Fletcher and look inside the Thacker. There it is. Take her one on one. Take her right up, Grace. Get in there. Yep, good move. Right place to get the pass, yeah. too. Yeah. And I know we're trying not to get beat on a fast break, but boy, we don't have anybody crashing the boards offensively. Mm -hmm. There you go. There we go. Held ball belongs to the Pirates. I think I've read in the paper, aren't they getting a couple new school buildings down there? In oh, West I Carolina? don't know. I don't yeah, know. I think finally they're getting uh, maybe new elementary. I'm not sure about the high school. I'd High school's been there quite a while. Well, Frost checks back in. Dewberry takes a seat, and uh, I've been pretty impressed with uh, yes. Taryn Dewberry. Goes out with nine points and just a really good job defensively. Yep. Lost oh. it out of bounds. Went off the way? Huh. Boy, I sure didn't see that. I mean, we're only 50 feet away. Just looked from here like it went right off of her yeah, chest. I thought so it? too. And a travel violation. All right. Three minutes, eight seconds to go here. Well, the wave definitely having trouble getting shots off. Um, and even when they get a good screen, it's just awful tough to beat them to the hole. They are so quick. The rest of the wave schedule from here on out. Our Wednesday night, Saturday afternoon ball games. Pandy gets her first look from outside. And way strong that time. Didn't draw on. Goes out of bounds. Going to belong to the wave. Yeah, I was just looking at the schedule. We've got the rest of the, uh, let's see if we got two, four, six, eight, nine straight league games. Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, the rest of the way out. And then we finish up with a Monday, Wednesday, Graham and Springfield Shawnee in non-conference games. Oh, wow. Two forty-five to go. Fletcher's got to force it up. Had it on her hip, taking it up. Didn't get it above the rim. Uh-oh. 
Yep. Our passes nice are shot. just a split second slow to get things swung around the top of the horn to, to get a quick shot off. Well, Frost, the leading scorer in the league, finally gets her first bucket to three, and it's 22 to seven, and it's a 17 to two run. Mm. Not using our screens there. Nope. Josie Camacho goes in. Gonna be fouled in there by number 20, China Marzette. That will be her second, team sixth. Both teams are 16 fouls, so anything after this will be one and bonus. Either way. Sacker kicks back to Camacho. Thought about it. Ball tip. And it's gonna be a foul yeah. on Pushed her out Parker. Of yeah. Yeah. That'll be the first on Tyler Parker and one and one, as we said, and this is gonna be Gracie Thacker. Thacker has two points. See if she can get three and four here. Lake and Bruner, the senior, checks in. Where's number 14 and taking a breather on the bench is Minoxi Pandy. Pandy's been shut out and came in averaging right at 10 points a contest. Come on, Gracie. Got the roll. We'll take that. Yeah, that broke kind of a scoring drought yes, for her there. She has three. Chance to make it four. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever she had. <laughs> Two of them just hitting dead yeah. on the back of there. Yeah, those balls just hit the flange and just kind of fell in. Hey, we'll take them. They look good. They look like they switched, didn't they? In the scorebook. Hey, that's right. Doesn't matter. 22-9. <laughs> There's going to be a foul called out there going to be on Camacho. Her first, and so we shoot bonus down at the other end, and at the line here is Selena Frost. I think that's her second there, Alex. Is that her second? Yes, it on is. Camacho? Yes, yeah. second. Don't need any more of those <laughs> double two fouls here in this quarter. Mm -mm. Going into half. Pretty stroke that time by Frost. She has four points. 23 to nine. Yeah, she's got a good forward nice line, doesn't she? Yep. 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 Five points for the sophomore and it's 24 nine. So those two answer right back to the Thackers two made foul shots. Get out of the corner, that's it. Try to hit Lind inside. Take it up, Megan, right there, girl. Get in. Get in. <laughs> Got to go to the line shoot a pair, though. Let's go. Find that glass. Yep. Nevaeh Millerton picks up her first and 18 fouls. Going to shoot a pair. <laughs> well, didn't draw iron. Let's put it in here, Megan. No rotation on that, either <laughs> shot. I mean, the ball just literally did not. It, I'm not sure, it looked like a knuckleball going up there. We've been working together too long because uh, yeah. that was the exact same yeah. thing I was saying. There is no rotation on yeah. that ball. Out oh, foul going to be on Avery Bauman, her first, and going to the line to shoot a pair. This is going to be Frost again. Well, you know, we said something about how a uh, leading scorer in the league had been held scoreless. All yes. of a sudden, she's got a chance to get six and seven points in a hurry. That's six of them, three straight foul shots, 25-9. Boy, it's too bad we were 5-5 five, five there with a couple minutes to go in the first half game, a couple yes. cheap baskets right at the last, what, 15, 20 seconds? Absolutely. First quarter, and uh, since then, it's been all downhill. And, Boy, she can uh, knock them down from the foul line, can't she? Yeah, 21 jumped in the lane way before she let go of that ball. Mm -hmm. Not sure uh, why they didn't see that. 26-9. Fletcher going to take it off glass? No. Get in, Megan. You're standing there. That's a girl. There we go. Megan Linda, Lynn now with four points. Offensive rebound. 26-11. This is Williams All back six in. double dribble. There we go. She didn't like it the first time, so she <laughs> thought about it and then tried it again. Backed up and tried yeah. to get a better shot. Williams hit two threes in the early going, then she picked up her second foul and sat out until just here in the last uh, 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's going to be Lincoln Bruner. Let's see if Lincoln can bring it up here. Gets a little pressure. That girl. Yep. Then traveled. Yep. No reason to do that. She had it yep. under control and uh, just lost yep. it. Play some good defense here this last 50 seconds. Yeah, let's don't give them too many more buckets here. Forced it up. Just as I said that, Tyla Parker gonna have a chance for a three-point play. Not even sure how that got up and in from where it was released from. Well, regardless, it's 28 to 11, and Parker to try to come Bert the three-point play, no, and Megan Lynn with a good strong rebound. She's fouled from behind by number 20, I believe it is. Is that who it is? Yes, that's her third. Well, Megan's going to go down and shoot the uh, bonus shot here. One plus. Megan missed her first two foul shots here a short while ago. See if she's gotten dialed in here. 28-11, 47 seconds go first half. <laughs> Banked it in, but... <laughs> With no rotation, that might be the best way to go. Yeah, her father's sitting over here to our right. We'll have to talk to Scott. <laughs> Gonna have to work on that. Uh... She shoots him like two-handed, doesn't she? Yes. Yeah, missed that one. 28-12, last 45 seconds, first half. Frost deals to Williams. She's open. I'll tell you, that kid can shoot. That's her third three-pointer here, and she's only played probably about five minutes. Oh, that's a foul, yeah. Foul on Frost was really handling Skyler Fletcher and pushed her out of bounds. Oh, what, you got to be what kidding call? me. Five-second count? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Yeah, that's right. I thought that would have been a foul on that's Frost. That's a bailout. Yeah. Nice defense. No. She going to hit another one? Not that time. Didn't hit anything. Down to 20 seconds. Avery Bauman brings it up. Take it right on in. And gets fouled. It's going to be on 20? 21. 21 that time. Nevea Millerton. Well, double bonus, but it's going to be a shooting foul anyhow. Let's see if Avery can knock in a pair. She missed two earlier. Let's see if she can convert here. <laughs> Boy, we're struggling with the foul line yes, right now. Yes, we are. Came in as a team, like we said, shooting 57%. West Carrollton shoots 63% from the foul line, and they've... Uh, Converted four out of five tonight thus far. Of course, when four of those foul shots were by Selena Frost, yes. who has really good form. 31-12, 16 seconds to go here in the first half. There we go. Yep, a short. little short. Well, down to 12 seconds. Don't give him a bucket here. 31-12. Parker to Williams. Williams thought about it. Goes inside. Flicked out of there by Lynn. Down to three seconds. Gonna have to get a foul. shot up. And she's about through that in no foul call. And that wraps up the first half of Miami Valley League action tonight as the Lady Pirates of West Carrollton go into the locker room with a 31-12 lead over the Lady Wave. We'll be back with halftime scoring here as you watch high school basketball on YouTube, the Wave at GHS. And welcome back and we're uh, gonna go over to halftime scoring here. We have uh, Selena Frost from West Carrollton with a three-pointer and four free throws for a total of seven points. Tyler Parker with two. Ashley Williams has hit three threes for nine points. Um, Ashley. Is she a Maddox? Maddox. That's a yeah, long way spelling. to spell that is <laughs> that. Yeah, for two points. Um, Nevaeh uh, Millerton, yeah. Millerton for two. And we have Taryn Dewberry. She has nine points, and so that's 31 for the West Carrollton. Yeah, they were four or five from the foul line, but again, like we said, that was all basically Frost. Frost, yeah. yes, yes. She has very nice form from the free throw line. And scoring for the Wave, we have Gracie Thacker with four points, Skylar Fletcher with three, Megan Lynn is leading the Wave right now with um, five points, 
and uh, hit a nice free throw there with a little banker at the end. <laughs> and uh, for the Wave to have a total of 12. And yeah. And wave just 4 of 13 from the free yeah. throw line. It's just, just killing them if they could be up around their 50, 60 percent. Well, I'd be hoping for around 70, but yeah. even if they'd be around 60, it sure would uh, yeah. be a little more respectful on the scoreboard. Yeah. You folks have just joined us. It was 5-5 ball game with what? Uh, basically about a minute and a half, two minutes to go in the right. first quarter. And then we gave them two cheap baskets there at the end of the quarter. quarter. It's 12-5. Yes. And uh, since then, they've just gone on a roll. Their outscored is 26-7 to and uh, really opened this thing up. And uh, we kind of thought, yeah. coming in, we'd struggle with this ball club. Right. And uh, be honest, Greenville hasn't played horrible defense at all. It's no. just been balls tip tip and falling one way or another, and Greenville just can't put the ball in the hole. Right. Yeah. That, that's kind of been our problem all year, just yeah. being able to put the ball in West, the basket. West Carrollton's so quick that they force the ball out so high that they're trying to start their offense from the volleyball court right. line, yeah. um, 10 foot line, and it just makes it very difficult. They've they recover well, so they can't get a three off, and they're not able to get, get around them for a two. Yep. Well, Jody and I'll be back in a little bit as we get ready to start the second half here. Once again, the halftime scores West Carroll 31 and the Lady Wave of Greenville 12. Getting ready to start the second half. Alex Warner here along with Jody Flemersfeld and uh, Shane Bragg here, uh, cameraman and producer tonight. As the Lady Wave stare at a 19-point deficit here at the end of the first half to this uh, West Carrollton Ball Club. 31-12, your score. Wave will have the ball. First possession here at half court. And on the court for the Wave is Camacho, Fletcher, Bowling, Pandy, and Thacker. The original starting lineup flicked out of there. And Wave retained possession. So see if we can get something going here. Just a couple buckets to get some, some momentum started. Yes. Skyler Fletcher held that first half to uh, just, what, three points? Had two fouls, had to sit out a little bit. But for the most part, they've done a pretty good job. Get in, Gracie. Oh, man. They ran a nice, nice play, play there. Yes. Yep. Had to roll across the lane from the backside. Good feed and just couldn't convert. You can draw up all the plays and execute them, but if you don't get it to go through the rim, I'd rather right. be – sometimes I think I'd rather be sloppy and have the ball go in instead of look good and don't score. Uh-oh. Ball off the Pirates and belongs to the green and white. Well, we saw that from up here. Yes. So I don't know what some of the West Carrollton yeah. coaches are begging for there. That was definitely flicked out off on the hands of Doesn't West Carrollton. Doesn't have quite a, quite a large enough lead. <laughs> Special out of bounds play yeah. you under. Yeah, yeah. Well, we played almost uh, not quite a minute here, and neither team scored. That was a nice seal yeah, off. Get in there. Oh, oh yeah. goodness. And we got it to pass in the right place. So we're doing some good things, yes. but boy, you've got to get the ball through that orange rim. That was an excellent seal and call for the ball. Just didn't fall in. Nice pass. Lindsay didn't follow through with it. Kicked around. And Frost is going to crank a three. That's off. And out of bounds and belongs to the Greenville. Coach is shaking his head on that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's got to be frustrating for a coach like Rachel Kearns down there. They're doing some good things, but the ball just isn't going through the rim. So I don't know who her hairdresser is or not, or if that's... <laughs> there we go. Nice there we go. Manaxi Pandy with her first two of the night. I'll tell you what, Alex, about the only way to break a zone free when they're pressing as hard as they are pressing against us and are so quick is to get a back door. And then they yeah. have to loosen up a little bit. Right. Yeah, that was a nice cut. That's the second time that Panty's going yes. back door. And this time they're able to convert it. So 31-14, Wave have the first bucket here in the second half. I'm going to take a look here just a second. And I want to take a look at the uh, standings in the Miami Valley League here as far as girls play is concerned. Pull it up here in just a second. In the Miami division, which would be the north, Troy's in there, six and one right now. They've got a girl, I think, Macy Taylor, if I'm not mistaken, is going to play at Wright State. Oh, is that right? Yeah, she's yeah. their all-time leading scorer over in Troy right now. So Troy's at six and one. Butler four and three. Tip's kind of in the down season right now. They're just three and three in the league. Wave two and five, and then Pick was just really, uh, really struggling at zero and seven. Down south in the Valley Division. No, it seems funny to say Sydney down south, but yes. Sydney seven and one. West Carrollton five and one. Stebbins five and three, and then Fairborn. Same boat that uh, Pickwiz, 0-7. Nice pass, Lizzie. Good block by Thacker. 
and Xenia's two and three in there. So, you know, Troy right now seems to be, uh, has a two game lead in the North right now in right. the Miami division. That was a good defensive play by Gracie Thacker that time. So with 6.23 left, it's 31-14. West Carrollton inbounds. Give it back to Frost. Got Manaxi Pandy playing on good defense that time again by Thacker. So that's a block and a deflected pass out of bounds there in the early going. Thacker's another girl. You watched her play last year in the JV game, and you thought, you know, she works at it. She could be a pretty good ball player and just needs to get a little stronger in there and keep working offensively on her moves. And it seems like she has. Yeah, and getting the ball to go through the hole. Nice drive. Boy, what a pretty play by Tara Dewberry. She has her per game average now of 11 points on a nice move, and it's 33-14. Now look for the back door cut again. That's it. Take it up yourself, Grace. Get in there. I, see, that's kind of a throw instead of a shot. Yeah. Got to work on that. And we don't keep going with it. We kind of stop like we're waiting to get contact, and then when it doesn't happen, it falls even yeah. shorter. Right. Williams going to think that's way short. Rebound, fought for, and... Finally, Fletcher comes out of there with it. Has Pandy down court, missed her. Got it to her, let's see if Manaxi can convert. It does, there. and a foul on Williams. So Manaxi Pandy, two quick buckets here to start the second half, and it's 33-16. And Williams will pick up her third foul. It was nice to see him look up and get the ball right. down the court quickly instead of a, kind of as an afterthought at times. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what Manaxi Panda can do here. Came in averaging uh, right at 10 points a contest. Now has four chance to make it five. Oh, boy, we just are not <laughs> converting anything. That's four of 14 from the foul line as a team right now. That's the fourth foul on China Marzette. China came in off the bench, and boy, she's uh, picked up four fouls in a hurry here. 5-18 to go third quarter, 33-16, West Carrollton. Pandy hounded way outside. That's pretty good movement of the feet and stuff there on defense by Dewberry. Yes. I, I can say I've been very impressed with her. That's it, Emily Bowling nice takes it up, up draws nice a foul. Nice up. Yep. yep. Did a good job of pinning her defender on her backside, and made a move to the bucket, drew the foul, and that's five. She is gone, wow. Fouls out with five minutes going to go in the third quarter. We're trying to, we're going to go over, kind of wonder what happened here. She only played maybe seven, eight minutes and picked up five fouls. And this will be Emily Bowling at the line, trying to convert two. Oh, well. Yeah, the other four or five points from the foul line right now look a little bit better. We'd have been within 10, 12 points. Yes. Come on, Emily. Let's put it in. Mm, come on. Oh. I thought for sure that was going to drop. It goes off of West Carrollton. Okay, the wave now four of 16 from the foul line. Mm. I don't know if it's putting gray hairs on Rachel's head, but yes. it's putting them on mine. Well, I, if I had any hair to put them on. This is Megan Lynn. Go up strong, Megan. Kick it back out, had a girl. Yeah, and again, nobody really going to help her. Mm. Kind of standing, waiting to see what she was going to do with the ball. Nice, nice pass. pass. Oh, Megan wasn't quite ready for a pretty pass by Skylar Fletcher. Yep, Skylar's a little frustrated out there. She's uh, been hounded pretty much all night, and many a nice pass there, and we just didn't convert it. I just like to see Greenville go more to the basket. Well, we forced it. We didn't force it. We just didn't have much of a shot that time. 33-16, West Carrollton, 4.30 to go, third quarter. Well, Tyla Parker has four points, 35-16. Boy, it doesn't get any easier after the night, too. Next ball game is against Sydney, and Sydney's ball club that beat uh, Hannah West Carrollton. They're only lost. Get nice, in there, nice. nice. Yep, good little uh, roll to the bucket that time by Bowling. And 
she you know that's what I was saying she Finish. flowed flowed to the basket mm -hmm. this is Dewberry out front boy nice crossover you gonna call a foul there gonna go on bowling Three fifty-two left, third quarter, thirty-five eighteen, and uh, first foul of the second half gives the ball out of bounds under the bucket to the Lady Pirates. Good crossover by Dewberry. Oh, Travel there. Uh, yeah, I can't believe they didn't call that. I can't either. <laughs> this is Avery Ballman came in here at the last dead ball. The freshman brings it up court, deals to Fletcher, take it on it, bounced it off her foot. And yeah. on the left side, just where she wanted it. Yep, yep. Skyler's just gotten a little frustrated out there. She's, but her shoes still sparkle. So, <laughs> <laughs> find the positive. Crowd's been, uh, which is probably ninety-eight percent Green Wave fans. It's foul on Megan Lynn. Crowd's been kind of quiet here, Jody. We yes, have they have. Got anything to stir them up? We got more excited on those backdoor cuts we than did. what they did. I would hate to think that we're the only people that appreciate those moves, but maybe we were. I don't know. First shot's up and in. This is who? Trinity David? Is that who's shooting that foul yes. shot? Yes, yes. Oh, a 5'8 senior's going to try to convert two, doesn't? Oh, nice move across there to pull it out of there by... Nevaeh Millerton. That ball took a nasty bounce. Yep. Millerton with a strong move to the bucket. She has her second bucket. It's 38-18. Boy, came close to stepping back on the line. Nice cut. Get in, Megan. Pretty pass. You're right, Jody. Yeah. We can backdoor them that way because they're overplaying so much outside. Right. Just a nice cut and a nice pass. By Fletcher. Nice move to the bucket that time. Well, won't help us to trade baskets, or will it, Alex? No. 40-20, yep. 2.40 to go. That was Dewberry. She now has 13 points. Again, look for that backdoor cut. Well, that Dewberry finally got called for the foul. She moves her feet real well. She that does. time she got her yeah. hands in there a little bit. That's her first foul. Wow. If she doesn't run track, I'd be surprised. Yeah, she's not going to throw uh, the disc or shot, is she? No. <laughs> 2 18 left third quarter, 40 20. And that was no reason to throw that pass. That's too bad. Get back there, Megan. And blocked it. Good recovery. And they're saying it went off of. Must have bounced off of her when it hit. But it hit the stage and it kicked back and hit her? I'm not sure. No, I think when she blocked it, I think oh, it, it brushed okay. off of her when she blocked okay. it. Okay. Well, it was a good call then because I would have called it the other way. We'll take it. Yes. Even two minutes ago here in the third period, there's a cut inside, Packer double team and tied up. They're going to call a foul on Parker. That's five team fouls on uh, West Carrollton right now. I think she was okay till she put that inside arm in there trying to get at the ball. She'd kept her outside arm. She'd have been, been golden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just an experience here. I, Megan's making a pass she didn't need to make right, right. there. And possession error belongs to the Lady Pirates. So. Just can't break that 20 point barrier right no, at the moment. No. And, you know, they outscored us 35 15, tied at five, and then boom, here we are at 40 20. Parker threw a little elbow in there, there got away did. with it. And comes down to Fletcher. Skyler on Come dribble. On. Hey, we got we got too many people in the same lane going yeah. down court. 
And count it. How about Skyler Fletcher? <laughs> we have, uh, yeah, we're just not, not spreading the floor. We're yeah. getting in each other's way a little bit. Yeah. Had like a three on one, three on two break, but yeah. unfortunately, all three of ours were within five feet of each other. But Skyler made it count. Yes. She now has five points. And see if she can make a six. Man, we are just struggling at the foul line. 0 for 4 from the foul line here. 4 for 17 overall. Like I say, if we hit half of those. Oh, yeah. Parker's going to take it. Boy, that looked good as soon as she let go of yes. it. Nice little mid-range jumper. Yep. She's a 5'7 uh, freshman. She now has six points. Even minute left here. See if we can get another bucket or two here. Take it on in, get in there, and draws a foul. Boy, that will say they are piling up the fouls. That's 17 fouls, and Emily Bowling who made a move to the bucket. Could have made another step or two there, but going to go to the line and shoot a pair. Oh, is this Bruner? Excuse me, Lake and Bruner. I thought it was Emily Bowling there for just a second. You know. Lily Hayes is uh, not dressed tonight, is yeah, she? Yeah, I wondered that too. Lily Hayes, a 5'8 senior, plays quite a bit. And Just so reliable. Mm -hmm. Does a lot of the little things. Yes. Lakin. Well, Lakin can make what, five shots. Two nice looking free throws yeah. there. Well, you know, hey, we scored 12 points this quarter, so after only scoring 12 in the first half, we got 12 here already in the third quarter. Unfortunately, they've come alive on the offensive end a little bit too here, and there's a ball out of bounds. They're trying to decide, and he says, let's give it back to Wes Carrollton. 39 seconds left, third quarter, 42-24. We've stayed man-to-man -man the entire ball game. Parker says, I just made one, I'll try again. And Megan Lynn comes down with the rebound. Quickly ahead it goes to see. Lake and Bruder loses control and comes back the other way. Just <coughs> couldn't quite switch directions nope. quick enough. The last shot of the quarter and it's gonna be a whistle and call the foul. Gonna be on the court. Oh, gonna shoot. Gracie Thacker picks up her second at the line. It is Parker. She's been there once tonight. Missed the only foul shot opportunity she had. Freshman left-hander. Got Doesn't every part of the rim but the bottom of the net. Mm -hmm. I want to see her foot position on this, too. Looked like she did. It's kind of needs to drop that right foot back a back little, a little bit, bit, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? <laughs> Down to five seconds left. Don't let him get a bucket here. Parker's going to have to force it up. And no call. And that ends three quarters of Miami Valley League action with the West Carrollton Pirates 42, Greenville Lady Wave 24. And we'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a minute. Fourth quarter of action coming your way here on YouTube as the Lady Wave stare at an 18 point deficit to the Lady Pirates of West Carrollton. And uh, inbounds. Comes the ball and there's that back door cut and that time West Carroll got a hand on it. That was number 32, M Mara Nevels that broke that play up. Yeah, positive from the third quarter was yeah. Lady Wave outscored him by a point. Yeah, 12-11. As Dewberry split, a, split two defenders out front and Gets it inside to number 22. That's Trinity David. She'll have a chance to go to the line. Or no, call it a common foul. Take it back. Boy, Skyler Fletcher picked up those two quick fouls, and that's her first one here in the uh, second half. So only three fouls on Skyler. Oh, travel. Yep. <laughs> she, I think she even <laughs> thought she got away with it for a second. Yeah. Took about three bounces yeah, afterwards. And thought, yeah, I got, I got stuck that by him. No, you didn't. But that's about how quick she is, too. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh, yeah, kept that pivot foot. I thought she was going to travel an out-of-bounds pass. 
That's it, Skyler. Take it in. Got to work on that right hand, but it's going to go to the line and shoot a pair. I will say Skyler Fletcher gets to the basket about as well as anybody in the league. Just needs sometimes to be a little more under control. And I right. tell you what, going in there at 5-4-5-5, five, 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 it's tough two. to do. This says 5-2. Yeah. For Skyler? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm giving her benefit of the doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I think she'd be really dangerous if she was 5-5. Five, five. See, I've written it down 5-5. Five, five, probably miscopied that. I just keep copying the same thing over and over. <laughs> okay, come on, Skyler. Let's make a foul shot here. Usually she shoots a knot. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. She really just flips it up. Yeah. It just doesn't hold her shot. Six for 21, the wave tonight for the charity stripe. This is kind of a shot just flipped up there by number 32, Mira Nevels. Out of bounds, belongs to the Pirates. Well, the stage crew just got... Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of there tonight, aren't they? Hey, we got a nice steal on the inbounds, yeah. Avery did. Yep. Here we go, over here we go. Nice pass, Pandy. Gets in trouble and kind of boxed in, goes off of the Pirates. But it's just it's just a late pass. Yeah, just she was just a, so much. Yeah, she needed to get the ball about two yeah, steps before that. Two, se two steps before. Because when she caught it, she was under the bank board. Yep. Right idea, just the timing was off. In the, and they've already. Uh -oh. uh, Boy, got away with the travel there. Yes. <laughs> Skylar Fletcher, that should be, ah, that's it. Megan, take it back up. All right, draws a foul. Good work inside by the freshman, Megan Lynn. It's going to be on Nevaeh Millerton. It's her third. Well, Megan needs to make a bucket or a couple foul shots here. Yes. She struggled from the line. She's one for four tonight. At least had a one-hand follow-through that That looked time. a little bit better. That looked yes. a little bit better, yeah. but the results were still the same. 42-24, 6.30 to go. In, I guess I don't really need to see regulation, do I? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Maxi Pandy gets in there, breaks it up. Parker pulls it out of there. You know, Wave has scrapped hard and played pretty decent defense for the most part. Right. I haven't been maybe as impressed by West Carolina. I thought they'd be pretty good coming in, but they haven't really impressed me that much. The Dewberry girl does. Yes. And they're quick. But I just don't know as uh, Maxie Pandy picks up her first foul. I just don't know uh, if I consider them a ball club that could go far in the tournament. They missed a whole lot of basically easy shots. And again... Mm. Uh, maybe an off night of shooting. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's a tough foul. Come here, Avery Ballman, her second. That's the 16th foul on the Wave. Waver in the bonus. In fact, this will be in a double bonus after the next yeah. West Coast foul. Feet moving and hands weren't reaching. I'm not sure. Either a no call or... Right. Frost tries to move in, goes off of West Carrollton. Ball belongs to Wave. Checking in uh, last dead ball, number 25. That's Rianne Fisher, a 5'8 senior. And also came in that last time was number 22, I believe. That's Trinity David. Under six minutes left. Blocked out of bounds. Wave will retain possession. Well, Skyler Fletcher trying to get to that block on the left side. Didn't get there, and Rachel Feely calls timeout. Now, let's take a look at the schedule here. After this, uh, like we said, uh, it doesn't get any easier as they travel up to Sydney here next Wednesday night. Then they come back home on the 8th of January and take on the Troy Ball Club. It's 6-1 uh, in the league. And like I said, they have a girl at uh, Macy Taylor signed to play at Wright State and is the uh, all-time career scorer at, for, at uh, Troy. Then we get a break. Fairborn is really struggling, so that's a game here at home that we, we should win. We need to win. Yes. 
And then as you come down through there, Pick was another one uh, as they come in later. So there's some winnable ball games down there. Right. And uh, like I said, we can't fault the effort of uh, oh, no, Lady not Wave, but not a bit. I don't know if any of you fans were out uh, the other night and watched the Wave boys. Heartbreaking loss to Stebbins. Had a 40, had a 38-32 lead with uh, about four minutes to go in the ball game. Stebbins took the lead. We fought back. Tied at 43 all. We had the ball. Didn't convert. Stebbins came down in the last 38 seconds, hit a three at the buzzer to beat us 46-43. There's going to be a foul called. Skylar Fletcher will go to the line to shoot a pair. That's going to be on Selena Frost. That's only her second. Anyhow, the boys uh, struggling right now at one and six. And their schedule kind of mirrors the same thing for the, the girls, mm -hmm. except opposites as far as home and away. Yeah. Well, that looked right. better. Yeah. Skyler now has six points. Well below her average of 13. Short. Nope. That's it, Megan. Right on up. And draws a foul. Good job on the boards, Megan Lynn. Like I said, she came in averaging six rebounds a game. And foul's going to be on the Shia Maddox. And like I say, this could take a while now. We've got double bonus. Rest of the way out. There we go. Oh, thought that one had a chance when it left. There's a reason you want the ball to spin, right? There yeah. is. Uh -huh. Who was in there too quick, Megan? Megan. And that Megan counts as a foul shot, too, if I'm yep. not mistaken. Psyched her out. Yep. 42-25, 17-point lead. And unfortunately, this ball game really hadn't been in doubt since about uh, late in the second quarter. Nice Getting drive. Gracie, good drive. Gracie Thacker, that's the first time I've seen her handle the ball like that. She took it right to the rim, and she has six points. Ducked underneath that girl's arm a little bit and put it right in. A lot of passing inside there, and finally pulled out of there by Rianne Fisher. Not, had a hand on it, went out of bounds. So, 5.06 to go. 42.27. Alex Warner along with Jody Flummersfeld. Glad you could join us. Miami Valley League action here tonight at the high school gym in Greenville. Avery Bowman comes out with a loose ball. Should be two. Ah. Nice job, Gracie. That's another one. We just got to go up stronger. Yeah. She just got to be a little stronger there. William says, I haven't hit a three this half, and she continues not to have had a three. Come on, Monoxy, get the ball. Mm -hmm. yep. Jump ball, possession arrow, belongs to the Pirates. Well, Taryn Dewberry checks in, and two players checked out. Now they come back in. Five on four, that might have given us a chance to get back in this yeah. thing in a hurry, yeah. That's nice it, job. good job, Josie Camacho. <laughs> Call a foul on Minoxi Pandy, and it's gonna be one and one. <laughs> That's her second. And it's gonna be Ashley Williams' line. Well, Williams started out hot. Hit two threes early in the ball game. Hit another three in the second quarter. She's been uh, scoreless ever since, but gonna have a chance for one and one right here. She averages eight a game, a 5-5 junior. Not this time. Megan Lynn with another rebound. She's gotta be getting close seven, eight rebounds tonight, if not more. Boy, the count's on, timeout called by Rachel Kearns because we weren't going to get it over the timeline yeah. in 10 seconds. So 4.26 left. Jody and I'll be back in just a minute. Greenville inbounds the ball as the play resumes here. This is Camacho. There it is. Gets ahead of uh, Fletcher. Schuyler's going to go in two on one and drop it in. That's her yeah. spot, isn't it? I'll tell you what. I'm, you know, four minutes left. Mm -hmm. 
Greenville's struggled to score, and now they're going to put the press back on after they took it off in the third quarter. I tell you, there's 4.09 left. We're only down 13. And that's when you start wondering, what if we'd made some foul shots? Seven oh, for 26. Yeah. Oh. I tell you, if we just made half our foul shots, we're only within seven points here right now. Now, she must have tipped that ball out herself mm -hmm. the way she went after it because otherwise yeah. I'm sure she would have let it just go out of bounds. Yep. Clock moving under four minutes now. Well, Scarlett's going to go home. They know they've been in the ball game here. At least the scrappy yes. way ball clubs fought them every second of the way. Boy, got beat baseline. Nice move, Dewberry. Yeah, Megan Lynn came out and jumped. Uh, and uh, Dewberry just recognized it, took it right to the hole. Jersey Camacho she, comes out, she got some blood. Popped. Yeah, a little blood coming out of the nose there. Dewberry has 15 points. She likes coming off that left side and mm -hmm. using her right hand then for the, the layup. Mm -hmm. Coach Coons calls timeout, so. 342 left, 4429, and uh, wanted to talk things over here. We'll be back in just a moment here as you watch high school basketball on YouTube. Getting ready to resume action here after the Greenville timeout on the court for the way we have Bauman, Fletcher, Pande, Lind, and Thacker. It'll be the wave ball in front of the uh, stage here at the south end. And down 15, 4429. Whoops. Yep, went to make the pass, and the Naxi wasn't there, yep. and Gracie drug her foot. That's too bad. Yes, yes, do you No, know, this is Frost out for Yeah. Nice. You don't want to charge it. Dewberry very, very yeah. quickly, or she's going to go right around you. You know, the one thing I think is going to hurt uh, West Carrollton, maybe a couple times here in league action, and definitely when they get into the tournament, they just don't have a big presence inside. Right, right. They don't have that 5'11", 6-foot girl that can dominate the paint. Yes. I think that's going to catch up to them eventually. They've got the parts on the perimeter. Well, absolutely. But they just uh, are missing inside. Well, Ashley Williams is there. She's going to shoot a pair, evidently. She has 10 points. Bruner comes back in. Manaxi Panic goes out. Hey, Manaxi's played hard, but just has two buckets. They've really kind of hounded her. She's only had one really good look. Well, right. not even a great look from uh, outside the arc. A little over three minutes to go here. Wave trail by 16. That's it. Good job of handling the ball there, Avery Bauman. Gets ahead to Fletcher. We're going to the baseline. No, came the other side. That's what I say. If she could work on that right hand. And I know, you know, she's Which, predominantly left-handed. That's easy to say and hard to do. And nice buck at that time. That Dewberry again. And she does got a little of that Euro step going on. Mm-hmm. Well, she's having the big game now, isn't she? Yes. 10, 12, 17 points, chance to make it 18. That's hard to believe. This is her first trip to the foul line. Right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, first yeah. trip to the foul line. Chance to make a three-point play. <laughs> yep, got the friendly roll. 18 points. Dewberry, a 5'7 senior. Could be a career game for her. Could be. 245 left. Skyler kicks back out to Avery. Whoa. Oh, Skyler, that was yeah. unnecessary. Gave her, uh, gave her a little shove there trying to get the ball. So Skyler picks up her fourth foul.
48-29 at the line to shoot double bonus. This is Frost. Frost, uh, you know, she's been held to seven points. She hasn't scored here in the second half. So would we have it down to 15 a couple minutes ago? No, it's 42-29. It was yeah, 13. 13. 13. It was down to 13 points. They've gone on a 6-0 run. Yeah, knocks that one down. Even 20 point advantage for West Carrollton. They led uh, by 19 at halftime. Yeah, pick the pocket, and if Battle. that's on Skyler, that's five, right? Yeah. Five fouls on Skyler Fletcher. She's going to leave the game with uh, eight points for her evening's efforts. Had to handle the ball against pressure a lot tonight. I'm not sure what Rachel Kearns is talking to the official about, but when something cl cleared up in her mind. Pretty free throw again. Yeah. Who is that shot at? Number 12, That's 12 Maddox. Yeah. Yeah. The one that I struggled on earlier. Her hair's covering up the one. I kept thinking, that doesn't look like Tyler Parker. Hits them both. Good form. She has four points. 51-29, 220 to go. They're still going to put some pressure out there, and aren't they're they? still And they're still pressing. Yeah. Yep. Finally, a foul call there. Goes on Frost, that's her third. I thought he was going to call five seconds. I did too at first. <laughs> yeah, I'm not real sure why they're full court pressing right now. Man, I mean, I know it's man-to-man -man pressure. Right. I get that, but still. But come on, Avery. There we go. It's her first point of the night. So we can put another one down here. 51-30. How about that? Pressure, pressure off. Pressure's off. Got some points in the book. Dewberry lets it loose, misses. There'll be a foul called the point. There's a lot of fouls here in the second half, aren't they? Yes. Told my wife I'd be home a little after nine. <laughs> Not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the West Carrollton fans yelled out, you guys getting paid by the hour? <laughs> <laughs> A little under two minutes left. Let's see if Megan can convert. Man, oh man, oh man. One, four, nine right now. Mm. There we go. The two she's we'll made, she's banked in. Yep. 51-32, Megan has eight points. At least, you, at least you know even on a bank it comes off the hand straight. That's right. Jump Dang. ball, bodies all over the place. You know, it's the same way in golf. If they say, if you're gonna miss a shot, miss it straight. Gracie so Thacker did a nice job of uh -huh. keeping her box out there. Mm -hmm. Gracie's done a nice job in there. I mean, she's got six points and she's, she's scrapped. She's, uh, you know, rebounded pretty well. I think block shot or two, so. Just needs to get stronger. Yes. And really, we're asking her to play a lot inside and she's more of a wing type of person, mm -hmm. I think. If she's gonna play wing though, she's gonna have to develop an outside shot too. Minute 20 left. See, Lincoln could have taken that on in if she right. wanted, you know. Probably not confident enough with the drill. Yeah, right, right. There, there it is. There you go. Now put it up. Yeah. And draws a foul. That's it. Lincoln Bruder's come in and given us a couple of good minutes yes, of play she has. here. I think she might have got a poke to the eye on that one. Yeah, I think everybody will sleep well tonight. <laughs> 
little bumped and bruised, but should be tired. They've, you know, they've played hard. 51-32, minute eight to go. The third one did not look like the first her, two. Her form was different that yes. time, wasn't it? Yep. <coughs> I'll be darned. Yeah, it's like an entirely uh, different person shooting those two compared to the first time up. Offensive. That's her fifth. Wow. One oh one left. Fifty one thirty two. See if we get another bucket or two here. Uh-oh. And we still got the press on. Yeah, I don't get that. Played the passing lane that time, mm -hmm. Newberry did. And Megan Lynn hustling back, knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, I don't quite understand that, but. Yeah. That'll come back and bite you sometime, won't it? Yes, it will. Ashley Williams says, I need a three, and she hits her fourth three of the night. She's got 13 points. Yeah, I just don't. Oh, now they're going to trap. And then they're going to trap, top. double team. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That's on Dewberry. <laughs> yep. Technical on Dewberry. That will be on. That's your second foul. Make it three. Yeah, that's your fault, Coach, I would say. He's kind of yelling at the ref, but you know what? You got a 22-point lead with a minute to go, and you're double-teaming Teaming. and trapping. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's your fault, Coach. That's going to come back and bite him sometime. U.S. Carrollton fans, if you're tuning into this, uh, just telling it like it is. And still a little aggressive with his uh, speaking to the officials. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be Avery Bowman to shoot two because of the double bonus. And then there'll be two shots for the technical. I'm not sure what. Uh, no, I don't know what. Uh, why they're so aggravated. That yeah. was a pretty flagrant foul. Yeah, it seemed that way to me. This is the first of two. Who are you going to put up to shoot the technicals? Thacker's two for two. Yeah. She's not in the game. Yeah, she's not in the game. Yeah, she is. Oh, I'm sorry. I, w I was thinking Emily Bowling. There we go. Well, I guess I'd probably leave Avery there. Yeah, who's going to shoot it? Of course, the referees are looking for instruction. Oh, Maxie's in there. So Pandy's yeah. going to shoot it. These are the two technicals. And we'll get the ball back. Got the roll. Yeah. So we we'll convert two out of four. Yes. 54, 34, 36 seconds left. Wave ball. Wave call timeout. We'll take a timeout here. Wave trailing 54-34, we'll be right back. Well, after a wave timeout, try to settle things down on the court there. This thing's got just a little chippy, I would say. Yes, you? yes, absolutely. Well, let's see if we get through the last 36 seconds here without any problems and everybody head home uh, in one piece. Be Camacho to inbounds. Right there's a foul on number 12, you know. Why in the world they are pressuring and pressing with a 20-point lead, I will never know. Yeah. With 36 seconds. Let's see if Manaxi can hit another one. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's trying to prove down there, but uh, that will come back and get him.
Well, Manax, he's hit two out of three here this last five, ten seconds. See if he can hit another one. Good. He's up to seven points. 54-36. Yeah, I was going to say, just leave it there. Don't foul him now. Let everybody go home. Except she could get a five-second game. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Picked it up, held it, put it back down there. I think Fisher just want to get out of here, too. Evidently. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't foul now. You know, they I, might be clapping for that, but, you know, they should be clapping for Greenville, not fouling. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's the final score here, 54-36. Jody and I'll be back in just a second and uh, take a look at the final score. Final score, 54-36, favor of West Carrollton as they advance to 9-1. They're now 6-1 in Miami Valley League play in the Valley Division. Uh, Greenville, unfortunately, falls to 2-8, 2-6 in the North, uh, the Miami Division of the MVL. And Jody, again, we started out okay, 5-5, five, five, and then uh, the wheels fell off a little bit. We outscored them in the third quarter, right. and, uh, you know, for the most part, we played better, I thought, in the second half. And, and played them even in the fourth. Yeah, yeah, and we just could not, just could not get anything going at the foul line. Right. 14 of 38 foul shots. Jeez. 14 of 38, and the Pirates were 10 of 17. Take a look at scoring real quickly here. Uh, first of all, for the victorious West Carrollton Pirates, eight points, Selena Frost, six, Tyler Parker, 13, Ashley Williams, including four threes, four apiece for uh, Ashia Maddox, as well as uh, Nevaeh Millerton, one for Trinity David, and... Uh, Taryn Dewberry, we thought I had, a, I thought she had a pretty good yes. ball game with 18 points. Got a little out of control there at the, uh, at the end. end. And uh, anyhow, 18 points, 54 total for West Kelton. Uh, Greenville, if you want to take a look at them, Jody, here real quick. Yeah, scoring for Greenville with Avery Bauman with three points, um, Gracie Thacker with six, Emily Bulling with two, we had um, Minoxi Pandy with seven. Had three, uh, four free throws there mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. Uh, two points for Lake and Bruner, eight points apiece for Megan Lynn and Skyler Fletcher. Total 36 points away again, 14 of 38 from the foul line. Anyhow, that uh, concludes tonight's telecast. I'd like to thank Shane Bragg for uh, being our cameraman producer tonight. Jody, thanks for filling in. I think you're going to cover for me uh, sometime next week. She'll be back with Ty Houses. I think we played, who did I say? Troy's girls, I Troy. think it is. Yeah. So anyhow, once again, final score, 54-36 in favor of West Carrollton. Good night, everybody.